The Thermaltake View 71 Snow Edition shows off your build in style with a frosty white paint job and four tempered glass side panels. You also get two pre-installed 140mm ring white LED fans, a vertical GPU mount with bracket, and three-way radiator support for water cooling. So click the sponsor link in the description to learn more. What's up guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Paul's Hardware. Today's video is my follow-up video, my testing video on my fastest computer that you can build in 2018. Uh, that being supported by the newest Intel Core i9 9900K 8-core 16-thread processor. And of course, I've also got an RTX 2080 Ti in there. This is the Asus ROG Strix version of that. Beyond that, we also have an ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard. It's kind of tying everything together. It's all put together in this Liam Lee 011 dynamic case. The Bauer edition in white. Main storage drive is a Samsung 970 Evo NVMe SSD. We have a Cooler Master ML360R 360 millimeter closed loop CPU cooler to keep everything cool because the 9900K has been rumored to run a little warm. In my initial testing video for the 9900K, I actually didn't share temperature numbers, and I'm hopefully going to be following up on that today because temperatures are important. Also, the behavior of the 9900K by default with the motherboard, as well as the Intel default settings, I'm going to tr give a comparison back and forth between those. And then hopefully I'm also just going to play some games for a while because that's kind of what I want to do. That would be fun. Running out the specs, so we also have a G-Skill Trident Z RGB kit, and that's a 3200 speed kit running at cast latency 14. And then finally I got an extra SanDisk Ultra to one terabyte SSD down there at the bottom, just providing some storage for video games and anything else we might need extra storage for. Right now, I'm running Hardware Info 64, CPU-Z, Tech Power Up GPU-Z utility, and I'm also running an IDA 64 system stability test, which has currently been going for 17 and a half minutes or so. This is just so I can get a baseline when it comes to the CPU's temperatures and performance. As far as system setup goes, all I've done is update the motherboard's BIOS to the current version 1.38, and and then I've set the XMP setting for the memory in there as well, again, which is uh, 3200 speed cast latency 14. And we can see that here when it comes to the DRAM frequency as well as the cast latency numbers. What this is resulting in right now is a core voltage uh, that's vacillating between about 1.26 and 1.328. I'm getting an average of 1.29, max of 1.32, which is a little bit high by default. And that is resulting in some pretty high temperatures as well. We can see our maximum temperatures on the CPU cores are hitting upwards of 90 95 degrees, 96 and 97 on a few of the cores. Meanwhile, average temperature is at 88 degrees Celsius, and that is pretty toasty, especially considering that we have a 360 millimeter radiator in there, and the voltage is higher than it should be, but ne not necessarily crazy high. On the plus side, we are maintaining pretty high CPU frequencies, uh, 4.7 gigahertz across all cores, and that has been maintaining steady and stable. So as long as you have a pretty nice water cooler, you can run the CPU at this frequency, and it's not that difficult, but it is warmer than we'd like. Granted, again, this is a t stress test that's been running for over 20 minutes, so I'm going to shut this down. And then we can immediately see our CPU temperatures start to cool way off. So that is good. I'm going to jump back into the BIOS. I'm going to see if I can go and do the Intel recommended settings versus the ASRock, maybe a little bit more aggressive settings because this is their highest end Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard with good power delivery that can run at higher frequencies. But let's see what Intel had in mind and if we see any difference when it comes to the frequency as well as the temperature. So I spent a pretty decent amount of time searching around the UFI settings. Um, I was looking for a setting for SVID, which is the voltage as dictated by the CPU. CPU has its own voltage regulators and it can call for how much voltage it wants. Uh, turning that off allows the motherboard to dictate how much voltage is supplied and that appears to be what is causing those main discrepancies between the people who are getting reasonable temperatures with the 9900K and people who are getting much hotter temperatures but also better performance with the 9900K. It's just not there as far as I can find it in this version of the ASRock UEFI. If it is there maybe someone can let me know in the comment section where it might be hiding but for now I did a few different tests with various methods and it just seems like it wants to run at that full fat mode so I'm just going to keep it running in that mode. So that means that for the rest of the testing today my clock speeds are going to be hitting 5 gigahertz on one or two cores and 4.7 gigahertz across all cores. CPU temperatures again were pretty warm but not insanely warm. Again bear in mind that IDA64 is a CPU stress test so typically you're not going to see temperatures anywhere near that when you're just doing normal stuff like gaming. Case in point here I just ran the TimeSpy stress test just to verify 
uh, I didn't get the 99%, but I got 97.9%, .9%, which is good enough. Maximum core temperature was like 70 degrees. So that's what you could expect while you're playing a video game, well within reason, and definitely showing that if you do want a 9900K and you want to get the most out of it, a 360 millimeter radiator cooler might be a better bet for that just to help keep temperatures down over time. And I'm happy to say that the Cooler Master ML360 RRGB is doing a great job for us so far. So moving on, since this is supposed to be the fastest gaming PC ever, I am going to continue testing some games. Uh, to give a bit more of an AB comparison from my introductory tests with the 9900K and with the 2080 Ti, I'm running Fire Strike, so I'm going to run Fire Strike Extreme and I'm going to run Time Spy just so I can get some comparisons to the numbers I had a few weeks ago to the numbers I'm getting now. And once this is all done though, I will hopefully be able to actually play some video games. I tweeted on Twitter to get some feedback from you guys, what people want to see me test. I have some good suggestions, so I'm going to dive into those coming up next. So here's the result of uh, Fire Strike Ultra Test, the graphics score of 8,091, physics score of 24,859. Overall, 82.68. And if we compare that to my results, it actually it dropped a little bit. <laughs> well, the graphics score dropped, but just by about 20 points. So that's still within the margin of error. But we're getting roughly the same score there when it comes to graphics, but we did get a little boost when it comes to the overall score. And that's going to mainly be because of the increased physics. Here are our 3D Mark test results. Uh, GPU clock speed is running in the high 1700s and low 1800s. It appears to be peaking at about 1935 megahertz overall, and that gave us a time spy overall score of 13236 with a graphics score of 13728. But yeah, when we compare it to my launch day tests, and this is with a Founders Edition 2080 Ti as well as an 8700K, uh, we got a score of 13,286. So here we actually got a pretty nice boost, jumping up to 13,700, about a, a 500 point boost. And again, that's just going from the uh, manufacturer overclocked Strix version here to the manufacturer overclocked Founders Edition clock, which is uh, not too big of a difference in base clock and boost clock, which is using pretty much the same base clock and only about a 20 megahertz boost on the boost clock. So just ran GTA 5 and I used the built-in benchmark to run my typical tests again so I could get a comparison against my former numbers with an 8700K and the 2080 Ti Founders Edition. I just want to point out here that the frequency was a little bit higher. It was running at about 1850 to 1890 megahertz when it comes to the GPU core clock. The histogram has gone there, but trust me, that's exactly what it was showing. And then I just a single run here. Normally I do multiple runs, but this is just to show you guys real quick what the results are. Uh, average frame time was 10.3 milliseconds, which gives 97 frames per second on average. You can see the little peaks here. These are outliers. There's really only one that jumped up over 33.3 milliseconds, so that's not bad at all. 1% time was 66 frames per second. So if you want to play GTA 5 at 4K resolution on a 60 hertz monitor, then the RTX 2080 Ti does seem to be a pretty good solution for that. If the question is, do you need a 9900? K in order to do that though? Well, the answer would be no. And here again, just case in point that at high resolutions, 4K in particular, and a little bit less so at 1440, you will get the most out of your graphics card regardless of the CPU you're using. Whether you're using a 9900K, an 8700K, or even like a 2700X, at 4K, those differences lie with the GPU and not with the CPU. So with the 8700K, score was about the same, 97 frames per second, uh, with a minimum of 69 frames per second versus hours of 66 over here. Just getting into Call of Duty Black Ops 4 here, and in order to do my settings properly, I'm playing at 4K, 60 hertz, and I've got pretty much everything set to very high. These are mostly default settings that I had when I loaded into the game. I have, of course, turned off V-Sync. Actually, in the game right now, I am getting uh, in the mid-90s frames per second wise, sometimes dipping into the 80s, but overall, very solid. Eliminate all of the players. Oh, do you fly in on a helicopter? Press F to suck my dick. This is person. <laughs> It's kind of fun, Smart. we're in a squadron of helicopters. There you go. Still does the automatic parachute deploy. Oh, I hear somebody. Oh, I'm already gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, to, <laughs> welcome to Battle Royale. Game over. At least five other people died before me. Check out me dying. Well, he that's not fair, he has a gun. How did he even, oh, and he saw me through there and then he just jumped out and... I'm gonna do quads. I'm doing quads, so I have friends to help me. All right, well, I try to catch my teammates. A uh, quick update on statistics right now. CPU temperature is actually very reasonable. Uh, we're only in the mid 50s, maybe getting into 60 from time to time. We're at 4.7 gigahertz pretty much across the board on all cores, which is cool too. GPU temperature is at 68 degrees right now, and we're hitting about 1830 uh, ish megahertz on the frequency. Where did all my teammates go? 
Let me go in here and see if there's a weapon or something. Oh, look. There's a dude. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong button. That's why. Cluster grenade. Did that just equip that, or did I drop it? No, I just dropped it on the... Oh. Ah! Oh. Oops. <laughs> what the f*** you did? I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> I suck. That is definitely staying in the edit. Hang on. That's better. Reviving Brace Dog. I got you. All right, well, whoever is attacking us must have given up. Or we killed them. 21 people left, doing way better than in the first round where I died within 10 seconds. Okay, guys, push to 200 behind us, behind us. This guy is really a really good teammate. Oh, fucker. Come on, asshole. Come on, poke your head up again, asshole. Oh, Oh, fuck. Oh, oh shit. Got me. Oh, they got him too? Oh, did, you, did they? Oh, no. Ah, I died. Fucking bastards. Hey, I did better that time. All right, guys, I'm going to do another run of uh, Black Ops 4 at 2560 by 1440 here, assuming I can get back to blackout mode. I liked the quads option. Having some teammates really helped me out last time. Where are my teammates? There, there went one. I saw green. There's green. I'm following Anosh. We only have three on our team, too, which is actually going to give us an advantage. You know, we're more... Agile and um, give me some. Ah, there's a weapon. What is that? Recon car. I, want, I feel like I should hang out by Calm Killer. He's, he's a killer, but he's also he's ice cold about it. My teammates are giving information out again. I need to I need to back them up. Anosh, I'm coming for you. Hey, just to say your name before you put it. think I has a rocket on <laughs> that didn't take long. Save me. I slowly crawl towards my teammates. Maybe they'll find me. Yes, sir. Oh, wait. Oh, you're reviving me. Thank you. Following you, Calm Killer. Oh, yeah, stats update. Uh, we're hitting a much higher frame rate now. We're actually getting uh, in the 140 to 160 FPS range. So a nice jump dropping down from 4K to 2560 by 1440. It's not helping my gameplay at all. I still am mainly operating as a decoy here, but maybe I can help Calm Killer kill someone calmly. That's not, well, that's not what I meant to do at all. It's really cool though. Can you pack it up again? <laughs> that sucks. I got level two armor, so that's kind of useful. The guy just walked. He just walked in there. It's like, why did he set that up right there? Because uh, I suck. What am I chasing after right now? Something in the sky? What's this red thing on the map? Red. You're damaged. Is that me? Yeah. Oh, that's me. Okay. I'm chasing <laughs> after myself on the map. I'm not damaged. I'm at 100 percent health. Why you're red? What? Your screen's all dirty. Right, it's from when blood splattered it before I healed myself. Oh, I see. Apparently. Oh, okay, so you can go Yeah, and I get to up to 150, I guess. <laughs> Discovering so many useful things to do with this game. Hey guys, 195, 100 yards. 195. How do you know how many fucking yards is it? I don't know. You have to play the game a lot, I guess. Uh, <laughs> Shit, I don't even know what a yard looks like in real life besides what the length of the arm. Oh, shit. Oh, you got popped. Yeah. Yay, I shot a guy. Did I get credit on the kill feed there and everything? Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. The, it's collapsing on us. Swimming. She has a perfect, what's it, not a breaststroke, just the freestyle. Oh, where's that? Behind you. Uh. Oh, ah. Oh. Shit. Yeah, don't see you. <laughs> what? Don't <laughs> uh, see you, probably. What are you doing? I was trying to revive him. Kill cam. The kill cam. This is, this is dude killing me, kill cam. Yeah. 
Uh, like, that one guy, like, kill all of us? Jesus Christ. Yeah, he walked <laughs> into it, too. It's like... <laughs> I, I, needed, I needed to shoot him before I worried about reviving my teammates. Right, right. Lesson learned there. Okay. Sorry for the ghetto production techniques, guys, but my audio stopped working. So now I'm playing Overwatch, and here in the settings, I have on full screen. I'm playing 1920 by 1080 because the request from Twitter was to play a 1920 by 1080 higher end shooter and see if we could get a really high frame rate. So I've got the frame rate cap set to 300, and I'm using the ultra quality presets. So let's go ahead and jump in, play some Overwatch. Well, I think Science Studios, they made a video about the, the benefit of having a high refresh rate monitor and high frame rates. I guess you can see like the bullets more or something in the very game. Well, the idea of the high refresh rate is that frame is going to refresh earlier than the person who doesn't have a higher refresh rate monitor. So you're going to see what's happening on screen quicker. Yeah. So if it's a game of reaction time and response time and whatever, those little those moments, you know, can... Just, what? Wow. Okay. Wow. So that's... uh yeah, pushed. Yeah, that's Doomfist being OP right now. Also, realizing that I'm easily hitting well over... I'm, I'm easily hitting the frame limit cap, 300, at this setup, so... In his fist. Yeah, Doomfist really is kind of... He's fisting everybody pretty badly. Also just some times kind of tell when our team is getting worked repeatedly. Fisted bad. Yay! We won a battle. And then I died. <laughs> oh, you suck in the out of that guy. I don't think I was too far away to actually be doing anything. Oh, I am not <laughs> that was a waste, honestly, to kill one person with that. Yeah, it was funny, though. Ultimate, both heals and damages. How's that possible? That's bullshit. What? I was just healing, and she was just sucking the life out, and somehow her sucking, her life-sucking skills did more than my healing skills. Doesn't seem we're the same character. It doesn't seem like that should be a thing. So her sucking skills are better than yours. Yep. Again, it's a motorcycle <laughs> thing again. Yeah. I know. But he killed me with that just as Doomfist tried to tried to drop the, the hammer on me. Oh, mm. Alright. Uh, that was mostly pointless anyway because the frame rate was so high the whole time. Alright guys, that is pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you so much for joining me and watching. I hope you have learned a little bit more about what uh, a computer that features a 9900K and a 2080 Ti is capable of. I know I didn't test a huge range of games today, but I just wanted to kind of play some games, get the system up and running, and see how it performed. Call of Duty Black Ops 4 was able to hit well over 90 frames per second at 4K, as well as 140 to 160 frames per second at 2560 by 1440. And then of course you saw with Overwatch, uh, if you're trying to hit that 300 frames per second cap, and you're playing on a high refresh rate 1080 monitor, then yes, the 2080 Ti will more than do the trick. In fact, I think you probably should upgrade your monitor if that's the way you're playing. But thank you guys so much again for watching this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. And of course, links to the build videos as well as all the parts involved are down in the description too. Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you next time.